picture this. You're a middle-class, straight, Caucasian teenage boy named Kyle with seemingly no struggles in life, and you've been handed everything you've ever had. But you think to yourself that there has to be something more. You think, I know I'm Kyle from Cleveland, Ohio, but where am I from? Where are my ancestral roots? So you ask mom and dad if you can send in a 23andMe test only to be gaslit into believing that you are just Kyle from Ohio. I mean, what kind of culture does Cleveland, Ohio have? Bad recipes from as seen on TV cookbooks? The Luck of the Irish is the most jaw-dropping Disney comedy that I've personally seen, and it just didn't stop surprising me. And I'm gonna leave the big reveal as a surprise because I personally wanted this movie blind and I was shocked. So get ready for a tone deaf movie that's gonna ruin your day. In Luck of the Irish, Kyle Johnson is our protagonist, and he seems to have it all. He lives in a nice neighborhood, he's popular, and he basically gets everything that he wants. But not everything is always as it seems. The plot starts off with Kyle having an existential crisis because Heritage Day is coming up at school and he has no idea where his family roots are from. Meanwhile, everybody else seems to know where their family roots come from, so Kyle feels like an outcast. What a loser. Imagine the biggest insecurity you have is that you're from Ohio. He's having a nightmare about the school event where everybody is clearly dressed to represent their family heritage except for him. And for some reason, he's very small, like the size of a rodent. Oh, and then he gets stepped on. You see me? Kyle. Ah! Kyle wakes up from his nightmare and he's insecure because he's just so different from everyone else. Just look how different he looks. Kyle's parents are really creepy. Um, every time Kyle asked them where his ancestors are from, they would always act really weird. Like, they wouldn't even change the subject or anything. They would just act obviously suspicious, like they killed somebody or something. Where's our family from, Dad? We're from right here, son. I had this really weird feeling, like there was something they weren't telling me. No. Really? He wears this coin around his neck that he's had since he was little, and it makes him extremely lucky. He's in the school basketball team, and he never misses a shot. Looks like we got a little Troy Bolton in the house. He's always keeping his head in the game. In fact, Kyle always seems to be the one that makes the winning shot, and everyone at school thinks Kyle is just the coolest. I mean, he's got all his friends, he's doing a little dance, he's got all the girls, but you know what Kyle doesn't have? Culture. Heritage. All he knows is... Potato salad with raisins in them. I don't know, that's what I just imagined his mom making. Then we meet Bonnie, who's running the school's Heritage Day, and she asks Kyle what he has planned for it, but in so many words, Kyle says that he thinks it's just lame, and he'd rather focus on more important things, like sports. America is a nation of immigrants, Kyle. Everybody's ancestors came from another country. Yeah, I'm part Cherokee. At home, Kyle is asking his parents again where his family's from, and his parents continue to be aggressively weird about it. You know, uh, great soccer players, maybe. Or uh, cross-country skiers. Or... Like, I don't know why they shot this scene this way. I feel like I'm watching a Jordan Peele movie. I don't want to be the only kid who doesn't know what he is. You're Kyle Johnson. You're Kyle Johnson. Kyle decides to look up the name Johnson on the internet, but he can't find anything because the name Johnson is so common. <laughs> I miss these computers. Can we bring them back? Bonnie comes up to Kyle in the middle of his internet search, and she's like, if you're looking for sports trivia, try GoFindALife.com. If you're looking for sports trivia, try GoFindALife.com. That was a good one, Bonnie. You should write that down so you can use it again later. But she basically just tells him to go ask his parents again and specifically ask what his mother's maiden name is because he doesn't know that information. Kyle's looking for some documents through his parents' files and for some reason this shot is way spookier than it needs to be. Like, Why do they use this handheld shot? But then Kyle checks his dad's high school yearbook and he finds out that he changed his last name from Smith to Johnson. And this tells us nothing right now. Mom comes walking in. She looks like she's about to like lock him in a dungeon or something. <laughs> What are you doing? Nothing. Um. 
Kyle and Russell are out shooting some hoops and they're pondering why his dad would change his last name to begin with. And they start listing some things like, oh, maybe he's wanted by the FBI or maybe he's a hitman. And honestly, out of context, I would probably guess those things, too, because why? He displays his luck yet again when he makes his impossible basketball shot with seemingly no effort. And he also finds a $10 bill on the ground. But will his luck last? They notice a flyer that has the exact same symbol on it as the one that's on Kyle's necklace. And Kyle makes this really unnecessary comment about thinking the symbol was Chinese. That was like Chinese or something. But the flyer is for this Irish festival and Kyle is suddenly like, wait, maybe my mom is Irish. And man, this festival is just so Irish, like the green kind. I mean, you got step dancing, green hair, four leaf clovers. And I mean, I, I'm sure this is exactly what Ireland looks like. Pardon to you. <laughs> yeah, I would probably scream too. This book even says everything you ever wanted to know about being Irish, but were too afraid to ask. Wow, I can't imagine how Irish that book is. Kyle and Russell notice these necklaces being sold at the event that look identical to Kyle's, except they're not made out of real gold, so they're fake. And this random dude shows up, and he is so stereotypically Irish. He starts criticizing them for not making their own shoes, like he's some kind of Keebler elf. Yeah. Ow! And what will become of your feet when the road becomes hard and stony? Oh, look at this boy. Then he throws these quarters in the air and they magically stack on top of each other. And that tells us that he's really magic or something. That is something a Keebler elf would do. We have some step dancing festivities going on and this guy's intro is really weird. Your heart's full of blarney. Then the scent of the step loves you. If you believe in the little people and you know that there's a pot of gold at the end of every Remember this guy, because he's going to come up later in the movie. When the step dancing music starts, Kyle loses control of his body and starts step dancing. Kyle, what are you doing? I don't know, I can't help it. Kyle falls and these two shifty men help him up. And we need to remember this moment because it's very important. All of a sudden, after that day, Kyle notices something very strange is going on. A trophy falls on his foot, which has never happened before. He's never stubbed his toe or had any kind of struggle in his life. And then when he goes downstairs, his mom's hair is like completely different. And she starts speaking in this really thick Irish accent. So something is definitely off. I just thought I'd try a more natural look. Now sit yourself down and I'll put your breakfast on the table. And then Kyle speaks in an Irish accent and I just completely lost it. I mean, this mom sounded a wee bit. I just said a wee bit. Mom spills beans and she admits that her family is Irish and that she wanted to keep Kyle away from her side of the family because she wanted to protect Kyle from all the atrocities that the Irish have faced, like xenophobic jokes, mistreatment in society, which are all very valid things. But it's also very ironic given the theme of this movie. Oh, and mom gets progressively more and more Irish as the movie goes along, which ties into the big reveal, which ends up being extremely ridiculous. And I'm going to explain later. Um, but she gives Kyle this like bucket of Irish food for lunch. On the way to school, Kyle finds a dollar on the ground thinking that it's his lucky day. And when he goes to pick it up, he gets uh, soaked by this car driving by and then he loses the dollar. So it's not his lucky day today. And this day just gets worse and worse. I mean, he loses his homework. He gets water all over himself. He gets embarrassed in front of this girl because it looks like he had a little accident. Then his bucket of food gets everywhere. How embarrassing. And this gets even worse at basketball practice because Kyle can't even make a shot and everyone's laughing at him. <laughs> what a dweeb. Bonnie walks into the gym and she's like, Kyle, what are you going to do for Heritage Day now that you know that you're Irish? And he's like, I don't know, maybe I'll try step dancing. And for some reason, she gets offended. She's like, Ugh, everything's so easy for you, isn't it, Kyle? She's telling him that he'd probably learn more in life if he experienced some kind of struggle, which isn't incorrect. Poor Kyle from Ohio. It's not his fault he never had to work for anything. It was the perfect ending for the worst day of my life. Wait, this was the worst day of your life? Not a single day topped this one? We cut over to tonight's basketball game and Kyle is just throwing the whole thing down the drain. I mean, everyone is even booing because he just sucks. <laughs> 
The next morning, Kyle and his dad go downstairs and notice a bunch of smoke as if there's like a big fire going on, but it ends up being Kyle's mom cooking a whole ass meal in the fireplace. So I guess that is like another Irish thing that Irish people do, apparently. I don't know. If you're Irish, let me know in the comments that this is what you do every day. Russell notices that Kyle is getting progressively shorter, and suddenly at school, everybody hates Kyle now. I mean, he was really bad at the basketball game, so everyone starts calling him a loser, and now all the girls don't like him anymore. Bonnie tries to say something to him, but Kyle just interrupts and then rudely walks away. I just want I gotta go to class. Over in science class, Kyle and Russell are learning about magnets, and Kyle finds out that his necklace isn't made out of real gold when he uses a magnet on it and he gets stuck. Because that means it's not made out of gold, it's made out of iron or nickel or something. And it had to have gotten stolen. So Kyle's whacking out, he falls, and he says this. Oh, for the love of Mike! Who's Mike? Kyle, I need to talk to you. Look, I'm a little busy right now. Okay, but why is he so rude to her? So he's looking for a quarter so he can use the payphone and call his mom. Kyle is like full on transforming for some reason. He's like getting shorter. His ears are pointy. His hair turns red. And I mean, it, it, he's just losing his mind. If you thought being a teenager was hard enough, imagine actively turning into a leprechaun. God, don't you hate it when that happens? This movie is so weird. Oh, sins per serve us. Oh, yeah, I'm getting shorter. Okay, but wait, everyone. Now we get to the big reveal, okay? So Kyle comes home and mom straight up turned into a leprechaun. Like, she is, she is a foot tall. I know it's hard to believe, Kyle. I mean, when I first met your mother, You're I... not a leprechaun, too. No, no. I'm from Cleveland. I have so many questions. How do I do? I mean, wouldn't she be the same size as his? Never mind. No, no. This whole situation is just so crazy to me because mom is clearly mentally unstable and dad is way too casual about his wife turning back into a leprechaun. But since Kyle is half leprechaun, now he's slowly turning into a tiny person. Mom has clearly lost her mind. According to your so apparently the lucky coin that Kyle had kept him and his mom from turning into leprechauns. And now that it's gone, it's just ruined everything. So he tells his parents that it was stolen at the Irish festival. He tells them about the weird old dude that showed up, you know, with the quarters and stuff. And he explains the snake at the bottom of a shoe. And apparently, according to mom, that's Kyle's grandfather, and he is also a leprechaun. Oh, and his mom's maiden name is O'Reilly, because what else would it be? But mom explains that there's some sort of like bad blood between the two of them. I guess it has something to do with her marrying a human. And um, he also apparently owns this potato chip factory. So they all decide to go over there because they assume that he stole it. I love the shot of mom trying to open the door. <laughs> <sighs> And I'm still confused about why his dad changed his last name because it, like, they try to explain it right here. They say because dad was shunned from the leprechauns, so he changed his last name so that they couldn't be found. I, like, are they murderous leprechauns? Were they out to try and kill them? I, I don't know. I don't know. The whole thing is just very confusing to me. But they go to uh, try to see Mr. O'Reilly and they like check in with the front desk, but they get kicked out because Mr. O'Reilly wants nothing to do with them. But anyways, Kyle notices that there's a bunch of kids from his school going on a field trip to the potato chip factory. And so he decides to like follow them in there. Oh, and Kyle's grandfather apparently invented potato chips in the 1800s. Conveniently, Bonnie is in the group and she's like, Kyle, why are you here? Ariana, what are you doing here? Kyle lightly explains the family lore to Bonnie and like leaves out the leprechaun part for now. But all of a sudden, the guards notice that Kyle is there because they like check the cameras or something. And the factory immediately goes into lockdown and there's like this chase scene. This movie's so ridiculous. Imagine if this happened in real life. Why doesn't he like your father? Because he's not a leprechaun. What? <gasps> it wouldn't though. It, it wouldn't. Kyle and Bonnie are being chased around the whole factory by these like leprechaun guards. And then Kyle falls down this potato chip chute and he runs into his grandfather, who for some reason criticizes him not making his own shoes. 
I don't, I don't know why he's so obsessed with that. When you make your own shoes, you're the master of your feet. Look, I don't want to make a pair of shoes. Also, Bonnie keeps getting in everyone's way. Like, every single staff member almost runs into her. And I'm just thinking, Bonnie, can't you just, like, move aside a little bit? <laughs> Kyle accuses his grandfather of stealing the coin. And Kyle's grandfather's like, no, I don't have it. And he gets, like, kind of offended that he even insinuated that he stole it. And then he gets even more mad when he finds out that the coin was stolen to begin with, because that's what makes everybody in his family look human. You might be thinking, okay, but why is Kyle's grandpa not turning into a leprechaun? And he is, but he's turning into a leprechaun slower because he's older. I, I, I don't know. You lost it! Well, why did I have to wear <laughs> Oh, and there's this part where Kyle and Bonnie are both freaking out about the situation, and Kyle's grandpa starts randomly playing the flute. Do you have to do that? Like, what even is this movie? But then Kyle is like, maybe we can talk to Seamus. You know, the one that was running the Irish festival, the guy with the, the weird introduction. And it turns out that Seamus is really an evil leprechaun. Um, they all go and run up to the car and tell mom and dad that Seamus is the one that stole the coin and they all need to band together to go find the necklace but there's some family drama that needs to be aired out first. For there and to marry outside the little people. But I swear in me mother's grave, it wasn't me. <laughs> They're all arguing because mom still thinks that her dad stole the necklace. And then grandpa's going on about his daughter marrying a human. And Kyle's like, come on guys, can we all just get along? Kyle from Ohio bringing everybody together. Bonnie says she's gonna tag along and Kyle's like, but wait, what about your field trip? And Bonnie's like, how often do I get to help a clan of leprechauns? I guess, I guess that doesn't happen ever. <laughs> and then everyone gets in a grandpa or Riley's car and um, they like run into Russell on the way to the fairgrounds. And then Kyle has to like re-explain the leprechaun lore to him. <laughs> I think it's funny once he like sees Kyle's mom in, in, in shock because she's, a leprechaun. Could you imagine if you're sitting in your friend's car and, and his mom is a leprechaun? Like what 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 would go through your mind? I would assume that I was not in real life. When they get there, dad is peeking through this RV, like where I guess like Seamus is staying, and they notice this pot of gold sitting in a vault. And as soon as Seamus finds out that they're there, they dip out. Grandpa is just recklessly chasing Seamus and his henchmen all over town, and there's just a lot going on. <laughs> At one point, Seamus throws a pot of corned beef and cabbage at their vehicle or something, and it causes them to spin out and get a flat tire. Like, <laughs> okay. I don't have a spare, Kyle. What? Well, with all the good luck I've always had, I never thought I'd be needing one. <sighs> Grandpa is somehow playing the bagpipes without blowing into them. <laughs> I'm just really confused. Is he supposed to be playing the bagpipes? Are those bagpipes? What's going on? Kyle is super bummed. He's talking to his friends and he's just like, man, I don't know. I guess I'm just going to go be a leprechaun now. And he tells Russell to just go to the big state championship game without him. Kyle is basically like, I was only ever good because I got lucky. I wish that things would just go back to the way they were. You know, when I was just handed everything. Things could be worse, Kyle. Yeah, how? I could think of 12 million things that could be worse than this. Then it starts raining. I guess that's how it gets worse. I mean, when the Irish came to America, things were tough. And they had to work at jobs other people wouldn't take. And they didn't get paid what they deserved. Well, at least they got paid. <laughs> then they see a rainbow and they all start running towards it. Because there's gold at the end of the rainbow. So they go to the end of the rainbow, they find the RV, and Seamus and his henchmen are out having lunch. So they go to sneak into the RV because they're not in there. Kyle finds his coin along with a bunch of other gold coins. And immediately Kyle's grandpa wants to just steal all the rest of the coins. And Kyle's like, no, we can't steal these. They're not ours. We should go tell the police. And tell them what exactly? <laughs> and then Kyle's like, we didn't come to America to steal. We came to America to work hard and make something of ourselves, which is ironic because everything that this family has is because of luck. Grandpa is proud of Kyle acknowledging his tiny people heritage. And then as soon as Kyle puts on the necklace, him and his grandpa turn back into their human form. 
But then Seamus, the evil leprechaun, pops up out of nowhere and then sucks Grandpa right into the pot of gold. <laughs> but oh wait, surprise, surprise. surprise, surprise. Evil leprechaun and Grandpa show up at the door. So what, what, what was the point of all that? Seamus is like, give me the coin. And Kyle makes this bet that if he wins at sports, then he has to let his grandpa go and let him keep his coin. So then they all get transported into this like evil leprechaun dimension. They start playing all these Irish games that I didn't research prior to this video. Seamus says that he wants to steal every gold coin from every leprechaun of the United States so he can like be king of the leprechauns. It's a king we had in Ireland and it's a king I'll be. King of the leprechauns. There was a lot going on in this part. I mean, there was even a point where Kyle started breakdancing. They tie and the tiebreaker ends up being basketball. So then they all get transported to the big championship game that is conveniently starting at that moment. And if Kyle loses, he has to be Seamus' slave forever. And Seamus is masquerading as a high school student along with the rest of his henchmen. And I guess everyone sees them as teenagers except for Kyle and Russell and whoever so i guess that's how they explain it i don't i don't know and man kyle is not doing good at all seamus is making all these baskets and kyle's grandpa is chained to the basketball net for some reason halfway through the game grandpa gives russell this coin that he tells russell is lucky but he's really lying but russell doesn't know that he believes it's lucky so he immediately starts playing really good because it gives him the confidence to be good at basketball and that tells kyle that it's not the coin that gives you luck it's what's inside that really counts, which is bullshit. And at this point, the team is killing it. They're making all these baskets left and right, and then Seamus turns into his evil leprechaun form, which is terrifying. <laughs> Kyle passes the ball to Russell, and Russell wins the game. And then Seamus gets banned to Lake Erie in Ohio, which is very specific. And then Kyle gets his coin back. Luck's got nothing to do with it. <laughs> I feel like the moral of this movie is literally the opposite. And the movie ends with Kyle doing his step dancing routine for Heritage Day. And then he sings, this land is your land with Bonnie. She joins in and then the whole school joins in. This land is my land from Leave it to Kyle from Ohio to end racism. So the moral of the story is that you can have everything your heart desires as long as you are a lucky guy named Kyle with a lucky necklace. And if you don't, then you are one unlucky motherfucker. All right, friends. Well, that was The Luck of the Irish. I hope you all enjoyed. And to me, this movie felt like a very tone deaf and very strange attempt at building diversity in the year 2001. And I think regardless of like what your view is on this movie, I'm just surprised at how little this movie has talked about. I mean, like I see people occasionally get nostalgic for it here and there on like nostalgia pages, but I never see anyone actually sit and talk about this movie outside of like a few creators I've seen on YouTube. So let me know what you guys think. What should I cover next? Do you have any movie recommendations? Let me know in the comments. If you guys like this video, please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.